Okay. All right, so just wanted to quickly shoot up a YouTube video on making decisions and how to make decisions uh, from my experience. Uh, and what was really, really good to me was getting to meet uh, one of my teachers, spiritual teachers, Dr. David R. Hawkins. And there he talked about uh, there's like, you know, as I do the spiritual work, my, my consciousness level rises. Uh, my consciousness level rises. So automatically all my decisions are a function of my spiritual connection. That's all it is. So when I'm in my inflated ego, if, I'm in a, if I haven't done any spiritual work, when I was an active addict in several addictions, I had an extremely inflated ego. So basically my constant negative thinking and all my repressed feelings were making all the decision making. And what happened when you're in those fields of high ego, these feelings of a high, feelings of limitation, i.e. I'm really stuck in my thinking and super identified with my body as myself. This thinking and body becomes the sense of self. So I'm cut off from, from the infinite sense of intuition, the infinite love in the universe. So it's making, because it's so cut off from the light and the love in the universe, it's going to choose actions because it's cut off from the light, which are anti-life. You know, and those were the decisions I was making as an addict. So I was choosing a career, you know, like what's the best career? Well, it had to be the biggest ego career I could think of. That was the stock market. It was full of big egotistical people with uh, lots of addictions. So I fitted in a very disruptive, high death rate, uh, high acting out rates. Uh, then it was like, well, what about, um, what about the way I ate? Because I was a food addict and, you know, I was, I was having suicidal tendencies with food being told not to eat bananas and then by the doctors because you had a heart attack and then eating bananas and ha having to have an emergency treatment for a heart attack. So I, I literally went bananas by having a big, a big ego. So, so, yeah. I've had so many jokes about it, like you tried to commit banana side or, <laughs> or, or, or banana overdose, but uh, it's true, it's not a joke. And uh, so so decision making when I when I've got you know I've got a lot of thinking and I haven't felt out my repressed feelings or done spiritual work, all of my decisions, you know, are going to be bad, because I'm being orchestrated by that field of consciousness which is disconnected from grace. So, so there's two things I sort of say with decision. So I knew that actually the most important thing for me to make decisions when I was in that level of active addiction, was actually only focus on spiritual work. That's the only thing. I mean, you know, forget about having a life. I was, I mean, I was more or less dead anyway with kidney failure. Uh, so just focus on getting the strongest spiritual connection. And something, you know, I got to meet Hawkins in the States and I studied his work, is that I want to, like, be in, around people, places and situations which have the highest vibration. You know, that was the thing. I want to, like, stick to holy company. Uh, and so he said, like, for example, I was an addict, 12-step groups calibrated a very high vibration. Uh, so I realized that they more or less uh, are in resonance with unconditional love. It's not going to be as high as be sitting at this feet of Ramana Maharishi or Enlightened Teacher or Muji, but it's still going to be very, very high, and there's hundreds of them every day. So I thought, okay, well, if there isn't an Enlightened Teacher in London, I'm going to sit in 12-step meetings as much as possible, because that will start to tune me up. Because if my vibration is addiction, like 125, if I just sit in a vibration of, of unconditional love every day, it will start to pull my vibration up to the level of the surroundings. So I want to be in surroundings which have a high, a high vibration. So quite literally, I mean, the last eight years, I think there's only been one day I haven't been in a 12-step meeting. I mean, I shared today, I mean, I've been in four 12-step meetings today already. So I've just been sitting, not necessarily to hear the message, I mean, I've heard the message, but to hear, to be in the sea of that vibration. I mean, I could s spend uh, the day in a rave club listening to gangster rap music, and that would be sitting in a vibration which wouldn't be conducive, you know, or uh, being around. So did that one thing. So beginning from good decision-making, I trust that as I do spiritual work, automatically I am an orchestration of, my, of the conscious level I'm at. All the decision makings are coming out of that, that level. Uh, you learn things, other things like prayers, meditation, uh, uh, you know, 12 step sponsors, step work. Um, you know, I went to another one of my teachers, Muji, so I learned to practice self-inquiry. 
Um, I was also, Hawkins was, of course, a miracles teacher, and he talked about how uh, you can let go of your thinking or your limiting beliefs uh, through cancelling beliefs or doing the Course in Miracles, let go of your thinking. And Hawkins taught this way of feeling out your repressed feelings, and Muji taught how to be the witnesser. So all of these things deflate the ego. Uh, so I, I just re focus, really, my decision making, uh, generally speaking, is just pursue spiritual work and get to the high spiritual vibration and, and let the decision making take care of itself. However, that's not quite 100% true. Sometimes in life you have to make important decisions, wherever you're at. And if you just have to make a, an important spiritual decision, uh, I do this thing of a few things, right? Like, let's say I have to decide an important decision on Sunday next week, right? After whatever it is, it could be anything like, um, should I go on holiday? Should I uh, take up this job? Then I would leave the decision until the last possible minute and I'd spend all my time trying to increase my spiritual connection to the max until the last minute and then make the decision at the last minute. So hopefully I've managed to raise my consciousness in relationship to that decision making. Now, let's say, I, I don't know, I'm trying to think of an important decision I'd have to make. Um, okay, let's, I've got to, I've got to uh, look after my father's B&B, I have to get a new tenant in there for, uh, to run the business. Let's say I had three tenants that were interested in taking over. I would like wait until the last minute to make a choice on them and like pray for the tenants, I'd meditate on it. I would talk to my spiritual mentors about it, to reason it out, and take out all the fear and limiting ideas as much as I can in relation to that one thing, to get the maximum spiritual connection. Also do the Course in Miracles, you know, like put the, put the decision making into uh, God's light and love, or cancel my belief that I have to make the decision, I'm an infinite being, or uh, pray for a miracle, to the Holy Spirit to see the situation differently, or I'll just say, well, what's observing me not being able to make a decision on it and do self-inquiry on the decision to the last minute and then trust, even if I don't feel, my ego feels like it knows what to do, I'll trust at the last minute, whatever decision I make will be coming from a reflection of my spiritual connection. Even if, now one of the things that um, I would say is the field is more important than what your ego thinks about it. So, like, it, you know, a lot of people have realized that when they're in high spiritual states, uh, they do things and make actions and they all, they usually turn out good. Even, it's like, so the ego goes, I'm not sure if this is right, but when you're in a good spiritual state, it usually is the right thing. When you're in, um, because it's like the, the field of consciousness is like, it's like you're in the sea of the field of consciousness and it tends to intuitively drive you. Uh, I was, I remember in a 12 step meeting and someone's, their ego was saying one thing, but their feet walked in the opposite direction. So it's like there's this huge field that sort of makes you go this way, even though your ego wants to go that way. So that, that's the thing of like uh, doing it. So that's the thing I would say on uh, making spiritual decisions. But generally, the main thing is I just focus on spiritual connection. If I have to make a spiritual decision, then I'll work, I'll, I'll leave it to the last minute and process that decision with as many tools, spiritual tools as possible to the last minute and then trust that at the last minute I'll do it. One of the things I do, because I'm in 12-step meetings if, and I say to people I help, is if you have to make an important spiritual decision, uh, you know, read, pray and do everything and do it after, uh, right after a spiritual meeting because you'll have tuned up after the meeting and then you know, make the phone call, make the decision right at the end, and then do it then, because you're in, in, your, in a heightened spiritual condition.